No one ever got past France. You'd have to say he was the perfect player. He never wanted to lose. The most important thing that he had was he had a fantastic vision. Zugspitzstrasse, number six, Giesing, Munich, the childhood home of Franz Beckenbauer. The aftermath of the Second World War made it a tough childhood for the postal worker's son, but at least the Beckenbauers were happy. I was born in 1945. The war was over in May, and I was born in September. The country was on its knees and needed to be built up again. But that only came later. We had a nice childhood because there was no social jealousy, because no one had anything. One of the high points of childhood came when Franz was eight years old. In the World Cup final of 1954, West Germany beat Hungary. The country was captivated by the miracle of Bern. You couldn't see a single person on the street. Everyone was listening to their radios. And then something incredible happened. West Germany became world champions. Inspired by his heroes, Beckenbauer joined his first club, SC Munich 06, which was across the road from where he lived. People began noticing his football talent early on. I joined a club called SC 1906 at the age of eight. You just notice when people like you. You sometimes got something extra when you won a game. You notice that you were a bit better than most of the others. Five years later, there was a significant change of direction for the young Franz Beckenbauer. I was 13, and in 1906, the team I was at dissolved their youth team. I was an 1860 supporter at the time, and coincidentally, one of the last games for 1906 was played against 1860. My marker was really physical, and during the game he punched me. And then I said after the game to my teammates, you can all go to 1860, I'm going to Bayern. My teammates came with me to Bayern. Beckenbauer made good progress at Bayern, quickly moving through the ranks into the senior team. And at the same time, he was forming a special bond with coach Chick Kajowski. Chick was someone who liked me. He was like a father to me. He just let us play, like you let your kids play. Bayern were promoted to the Bundesliga, and soon after his 20th birthday, Franz got his call up to the national side. It was a brave step by Helmut Schoen to bring in a newcomer, or a nobody, as one might say, to take on this role of responsibility to get the win we needed to qualify. He asked me as the captain what I thought about playing Franz, and I said, we don't have anyone better. Schoen played the newcomer Beckenbauer, despite criticism from the press, and the move paid off. Uwe Zähle scored the winner as West Germany beat Sweden 2-1 to qualify for the 1966 World Cup in England. We had a very good team, with great morale. This was always important when we were together for the national team. Beckenbauer's World Cup debut would be against Switzerland at Hillsborough in Sheffield. I remember watching the match and I think, I th in fact, I know it was um, the first match in the tournament for West Germany and they played Switzerland. And uh, this young lad just took it on the right-hand side of the field. He did a little one to pass the ball and he was through completely and there's the goalkeeper come out and just slipped it past him. A little wave of recognition. 
I remember that match very well. We were allowed to play with a lot of freedom. Switzerland were brushed aside 5-0 with Beckenbauer scoring twice. After topping their group, it was Uruguay up next in the quarter-finals. Beckenbauer was on the score sheet again as the Uruguayans were beaten 4-0. The young German was fast becoming the star of the tournament. The semi-finals came and West Germany faced the USSR in Liverpool. They took the lead through Helmut Haller. And then Beckenbauer scored the decisive goal past the legendary Lev Yashin. A 2-1 win and West Germany were in the final where they would meet the hosts, England. We reached the final in the motherland of football. We were playing against England. We knew facing the English in the final would be very tough. A World Cup final against England at Wembley, undoubtedly the biggest match of Franz Beckenbauer's career so far. Just 12 minutes gone and Haller put the West Germans in front. It was short-lived, Jeff Hurst rising to head the equaliser just six minutes later. Then England took a second-half lead through Martin Peters before Wolfgang Weber levelled for the Germans. 2-2 and extra time would see one of the most controversial goals in World Cup history. Over the 90 minutes it was 2-2 and then came the extra time. I said after the game that England deserved to win, that they were the better team. But it is perhaps a shame that we still talk about a goal today that people still question whether it was a goal or not. The ref gave the goal, so that's the end of it. That made it 3-2 and soon after it was all over. Hurst sealed his hat-trick and Beckenbauer's first World Cup had ended in defeat at the final hurdle. A spectacular final and Beckenbauer had impressed. After all, England had dedicated their best player to mark him that day. I was given the job of, um, of actually staying with him for the whole match. Bobby Charlton was known for his creativity. He was on the move for 90 minutes. He had the lungs of a horse and I was meant to chase him the whole match. So what we saw in that particular final was two absolutely what some of the best players we've ever seen marking each other and virtually cancelling each other out. It was a tough task that was asked of me, and I didn't manage to fulfil it 100%. Perhaps the one success was that Bobby Charlton didn't score a goal. A young star, Beckenbauer's reputation was rising on and off the pitch, and it was during this period he earned his famous nickname. There was a journalist from Munich who was always looking for new nicknames. There were kings and princes, there was everything, but there was only one Kaiser. He was the best, so there was no other name for him. Der Kaiser was given the captain's armband for the 68-69 season, the same year that he led Bayern to the Bundesliga title and won the German Footballer of the Year award. Such was his mastery of the defensive role, he even introduced a new position to football. The Libero. Franz Beckenbauer was the first player to interpret this position in a modern way, score goals from this position and develop the game from defence. He discovered this. The next venture for Beckenbauer was with the West German team in Mexico 1970. The others always say the World Cup of 74 was the best. For me, it was Mexico. The West Germans won all their group matches in style, with Muller on form, scoring seven goals in three group matches. So Beckenbauer and the West Germans were in the quarter-finals, where a familiar rival was waiting for them, England. 
This time we wanted to win. Everyone was talking about revenge, but as a player you don't think about that. We just wanted to win. We went 2-0 down because of silly defensive mistakes. And that's when we thought, this is going to get tough. It took Der Kaiser to bring them back into it with a trademark run and shot. Then Uwe Zähler scored. And Muller scored in extra time to seal a 3-2 win. That's the worst I've ever felt, I think, at a football match. I've never felt as, as bad at losing as that one, because the game was won. The West Germans had gained their revenge. In the semi-finals, West Germany against Italy produced what was for many one of the best games in the history of the World Cup. Boninsegna gave Italy the lead early on. Then Beckenbauer went on one of his long runs and was taken down brutally. Unfortunately, I couldn't play properly because I dislocated my shoulder. I'd fallen awkwardly onto my shoulder after an Italian foul and I couldn't give 100%. It was a very one-sided game in the 90 minutes and then Schnellinger scored the equaliser just before the end and then it became interesting. The next 30 minutes must have been the most exciting that you could ever see in the history of football. It was as dramatic as half an hour of extra time could get. Müller gave the West Germans the lead. Moments later, Burgnich equalised. Before Riva gave the Italians the lead. Then Müller drew the West Germans level, 3-3. But just one minute later, there was heartbreak for the Germans as Rivera struck the decisive winning blow for Italy. It was a shame that we missed out on the final, but I think we gave them a good fight. Soon after the World Cup of 1970, manager Helmut Schur named Franz Beckenbauer captain of the national team. And success under Beckenbauer wasn't long in coming. They reached the final of the 1972 European Championships in Belgium, where they faced the USSR. Müller scored twice in a 3-0 win, and Beckenbauer won his first trophy for West Germany. Back then, the West German team was so good, the Russians weren't even in the game. It could have finished 5, 6, 7 or even 8 nil. Back home, the country was in awe of Beckenbauer's talents. And Bayern Munich were doing well too, under the leadership of Der Kaiser. In the 71-72 season, Bayern won the Bundesliga, starting a run of three consecutive titles, which set a new German record and gave Bayern Munich a special place in the history books of West German football. It was in the early 70s that the best times came for Bayern Munich, although we'd already been German champions once already, and we'd won the Cup and the Cup Winners' Cup. We were already very successful, but then we had the right experience to go on and to win more. Beckenbauer was earning a fearsome reputation, not only amongst his opponents, but his teammates too. I never heard anyone criticize him in my whole life, both on the pitch or off it. Someone tried once. Charlie on Bosco tried to nutmeg him twice. And then he was in the hospital. Franz kicked him so hard that he had to go to hospital for his injuries. The World Cup of 74 was to be held in West Germany. However, due to a feud between the players and the West German Football Federation, the team almost never made it. Back in those days, I can remember there was a terrorist threat from the Bader-Meinhof gang. 
Gruppe hat damals ihr Unwesen getrieben. We were affected a lot by security measures, and the security was very tight. We had police around us all the time. We just weren't used to this. We needed our freedom. It didn't suit us. This hat uns nicht gepasst. And it wasn't just the terrorist threat that put pressure on the unity within the West German squad. Und dann gab es diese unsägliche then there was the financial situation, which took half a night of discussions to sort out. And at five in the morning, 80% of the players were ready to walk out because they couldn't agree. It must have been dawn when an agreement was reached, and the team decided to stay together. It would have been a disaster if the host country of a World Cup had been without their team. Finally, the games got underway, with the West Germans triumphing in their first two group matches, beating Chile and then Australia. They then faced a showdown with rivals East Germany. It was a huge disaster, especially against East Germany. It was political back then. The war was still there, and it was one of the first matches between the Bundesrepublik and the DDR, and to lose to them was fatal. After the 1-0 loss to the former East Germany, there was chaos in West Germany, and we all thought we were on a slippery slope. I was the captain, and it was my duty. The captain's armband has a meaning and a value, which is that you're the right-hand man to the coach, and this was the first time that I had to play this role. I was one of the ones who got the blame. The team was rebuilt, France was very angry, and I was one of the ones who was sacrificed in the next game against Yugoslavia. With Beckenbauer effectively taking control away from coach Schoen, the West Germans managed to beat Yugoslavia 2-0 in the second group stage. They then put four goals past the Swedish in a six-goal thriller. The final group match was against Poland, with a win needed to reach the final. Gerd Müller popped up for the only goal, and West Germany were through to face the Dutch. The final would be at the Olympic Stadium, the home of Bayern Munich and Beckenbauer. The West German team had grown in confidence thanks to the strong guidance of their captain. We got better with every game and in the final, we went in on equal terms with the Dutch. They had started the tournament as favourites and played at a very high standard from the beginning. Then, as I said, we were equal going into the final. Another huge test for Captain Beckenbauer awaited. How would the West Germans cope with Johan Cruyff and Holland's total football? They hadn't even touched the ball when Holland won a penalty, which Johan Neeskins converted. But West Germany fought back and won a penalty of their own. I wanted to be world champion. We wanted to be the world champions. I didn't go to the World Cup just to play. I couldn't care less. I just wanted to win it. We thought that perhaps Gert Müller would take it, but Breitner stepped up and stroked the ball in. We were so happy. Then just before half-time, a chance for the lead. Three defenders went forward and I went in behind them and scored into the corner. Then we were there. Beckenbauer and his team had won the ultimate prize, the World Cup. But while the nation parted, Beckenbauer and his teammates were reserving their celebrations. We weren't allowed to take our wives with us in those days. So we organized a separate evening, especially for the wives. We were just sick of it. Six weeks of being trapped. We wanted to see our wives again. Because we knew that the players' wives weren't welcome, my wife organized a dinner party for around a dozen of the other wives at the Bayerische Hof. Whether we'd won or not, we would still have met up. 
uh, organisiert. It's amazing that we won the World Cup with such a bad federation. That must have been something. Meanwhile, Bayern Munich were becoming a feared European force, beating Atletico Madrid 4-0 in the replay of the 1974 European Cup final. On the day after the game, which was a Thursday, we trained and no one could even walk. We were completely exhausted. And then we found the strength to pull ourselves together. We won 4-0 in the replay played our best game of the season, perhaps even the best game in Bayern's history. The following year, Bayern were in the final again and faced Leeds United. Gerd Müller scored the second in a 2-0 win and Bayern were triumphant again. And in 1976, for a third year running, Bayern were in the final again, this time against San Etienne. Roth scored with a free kick, and Beckenbauer went up to lift the cup for a record third successive time as Bayern captain. I think that the greatness of Bayern was built up in the 70s, when Bayern Munich won the European Cup three times in a row, in 74, 75 and 76. It was an era which until today was unquestionably our most successful. On the international scene, 1976 saw West Germany through to a European Championship final. They beat Yugoslavia to earn their place against Czechoslovakia. The Czechs led until the 89th minute until Bernd Holzenbein equalised. This would be decided on penalties. Uli Hoeneß missed the fourth German penalty before Antonin Panenka scored a memorable winner. Czechoslovakia were European champions. This signalled the end of an era for Der Kaiser, his last major tournament. He retired from international football the following year. Soon after, he made the decision to quit Bayern, the team he'd served for almost 20 years. I was fed up with Bundesliga football. I saw that Bayern were in decline. It just went downhill. I looked around. I had problems with my private life. I had problems with the tax man. And it's often like that. When you decide on something, and everything happens at the same time. So I said goodbye and left quickly for New York. Beckenbauer made the move across the Atlantic and signed up for the New York Cosmos. So he came at a, the height of his career. He could have played anywhere in the world and he chose to play with the Cosmos. Beckenbauer and Brazilian star Pele's arrival made the Cosmos popularity spiral. The fact that we outdrew the Yankees and the Mets combined was in and of itself a media story. So our pictures got out there and uh, people did know about us. Uh, we were kind of New York's darlings for a couple of summers. So doors did open to us and you know when we arrived at studio we didn't have to wait online like everybody else and, and uh, we enjoyed it. We had a good time. It was the best time of my life, and I'd do it all over again. On the pitch, Beckenbauer won three NASL titles in his time with the New York Cosmos, and along with Pele, helped raise the popularity of soccer in the States. I was lucky enough to play alongside him. He went to Cosmos, so did I. We became champions together. We played against each other for 15 years, but for the last two years, we played alongside each other in the New York Cosmos. But after four years in New York, Beckenbauer wanted to return home to finish his career. His return to Germany wasn't to Bayern, as many expected, but to their North German rivals, Hamburg. However, Beckenbauer's two seasons with Hamburg were plagued by injury, and it was clear that Der Kaiser's career was winding down. But it had been some career, lasting almost 20 years, spanning two continents and winning every possible honour. But even the playing days of Franz Beckenbauer had to come to an end. He can't live without it, and he wouldn't know what else to do. 
The Kaiser couldn't leave the game he loved so much, taking over the reins as West German manager in 1984. And in 1990, he reached the pinnacle once more, winning yet another World Cup, Andreas Bremer scoring the only goal in the final. These days, he remains an important ambassador in the world of football. There's no doubt Franz Beckenbauer will always be considered as one of the true greats of the game. Beckenbauer was one of the best I ever saw play. 